My name is Callum McInerney Riley. I am a professional photographer. And today, we're going to be learning how to shoot amazing pictures using nothing but your smartphone. First things first, let's look at the camera settings. For a lot of grab shots, you can just get away with a stock camera app, probably in full auto, no drama. But if you want to really optimize for image quality, you want to be downloading something like Open Camera or one of these apps that allows you to use full manual control and set yourself up in RAW. So this app here is called Open Camera. Um, it is completely free on Android and it will allow you to change settings such as the ISO and your shutter speed. So you can have much more control over your final image. Most smartphone cameras these days have a very good stock camera. There are settings such as portraits, long exposure, but let's just focus on nailing it in the photo mode. You tap the screen, you have options such as white balance, which is the color temperature of your image. So you can make it much cooler or much warmer, depending on the kind of look that you want. You also have options such as contrast, and this one is your exposure. So we'll come back to that later of why that's really important. If you go further into your settings, you will find things like RAW. So that's JPEG only, that's RAW and JPEG. RAW will give you a lot better image quality. So you can use those for editing and you'll be able to get more detail out of the image shooting in RAW and have more flexibility later when you come to post-process stuff. So a lot of these smartphones have got multiple cameras. One's for telephoto, one's usually for wide angle. Some have got four, there's a lot of cameras on there. But generally there's one camera, which will be the One X, that has the best image quality, the largest sensor and the best lens. If you go to 5X, you're deteriorating your image quality. So generally, I would stick with a One X camera so you can optimize for the best image quality possible. The simplest, quickest tip that I can give you just make sure your lenses are clean. A little bit of warm breath and a wipe on a shirt, so easy. But the amount of times I see images that clearly you've got moisturizer, hair wax, all that gunk all over your lens, just give it a clean, it'll work perfectly. You'll get much better images. Right now I'm in Broadgate Circle and there's just a plethora of buildings. You've got this great big silver thing behind me, something with glass. There's so much form and shape everywhere that can make really interesting compositions. Uh, obviously in landscape photography, your landscape is this, but when you're shooting in cityscapes or you're, you know, you're out, out and about, you'll find some amazing compositions. Just look at that one behind me. You've got this curve of this building. You've got a nice flat uh, balcony and potentially some interesting people. They'll be doing their stuff, vaping, whatever they're doing. You can tell really interesting stories. Just see little pockets of light, sun's just poking out through the clouds. You've got a guy sitting there outside the Rolex store. I mean, just look for these simple pieces of form and composition that you can frame up and get amazing shots. Things like staircases and things, and structures like that just make for excellent compositions. You know, this is just a very straight line, the light's coming in. Just look for these little patches of light that you can find and you can get some incredible images. So the biggest thing with smartphone photography is optimizing your exposure. You're undergunned because you've got a smaller sensor compared to a dedicated camera. Those DSLRs, the mirrorless cameras, they've got great big sensors and this has got a tiny one. No matter how good the phone is, the hardware isn't as good as a dedicated camera. Once you understand that, you can start shooting in order to optimize for image quality and get amazing pictures with your smartphone. Let's shoot this thing behind me and I'll show you my approach in order to get the best image quality. Another way to shoot better exposures is to bracket it. So I'm gonna now switch to open camera, which is one of the apps that I have on this particular phone. I'm gonna lower that shutter speed to something, to bring that ISO down. I'm gonna lower that shutter speed to something really low said eight thousandths per second. I'm gonna shoot that there. I'm gonna shoot one. Five thousandths of a second. And I'm gonna shoot one. Four hundredths of a second. I've now got three exposures there. And later on, we'll have a look. I'll blend all three of those together in Lightroom. And I've got an exposure for the highlights, I've got an exposure for the shadows, and I've got an exposure for the midtones. I can blend all three of those together and cheat like I've got a big fancy DSLR. 
So you now know how to compose an image and get optimum image quality to make a smartphone look really, really good. But the reality is, if you're in a bad location with bad light, you're gonna get bad pictures. So the top tip is to go to places like this that are cool and that's got incredible opportunities to get good pictures. I mean, if you want good light, head to the beach before sunrise, shoot landscapes, go to somewhere, you know, go on a hike and make sure that you're getting a sunset over a mountain, anything like that. Find good light, find good locations, or find opportunities that present themselves for really good shots. So combining the optimum image quality with good locations and good light is how you're gonna nail absolutely incredible pictures using a smartphone. Right now is a pretty good example. That crane is absolutely awful. So maybe if I do this and we go in and we have a little go at, at editing this. Okay, so here's that image I just took. And in this editing software, there's so many things that you can do compared to what you used to be able to do many years ago. So I'm gonna get the tools, I'm gonna to use Magic Eraser, and I'm gonna paint out that very distracting crane. Arguably, I say this wasn't a particularly good shot anyway, but you've got a multitude of options, changing the contrast, HDR effects, so many different options in editing, and I would encourage you to play with all of them to refine whatever you're shooting and get the exact image that you want. I mean, I really do like using Snapseed, but I'd say my preference now has turned to Adobe Lightroom Mobile. Once I've selected a few of those images, I'm gonna share that and add all those into Lightroom. And here's that image that I just shot of the lady in green. Kind of like it too color temperature to be a little bit lower. She stands out quite nicely in that. Saturation, I really want to bring that blue out and make the difference in blue and green quite prominent. So it's just that exposure. I'm gonna put a radial gradient on a lady in green. And I'm gonna make her a bit brighter a bit more obvious um, and saturate her coat way more and then happy with that that looks cool pump the clarity up so that looks really good the sky is not really doing it for me I like this leading line in here but the sky is not really uh, adding anything and this this bit's quite distracting so I'll just crop that up like this, better. Um, I think we need to probably make a little bit of a big deal of this entrance bit. Could be brighter. Cool to get a bit of color in there maybe. Yeah, it's a cool shot. From that to that, great. Safe to device. Shooting on a smartphone and using an editing tool like Lightroom Mobile, you can have all of your presets that you really like, store them in here and give yourself a quite distinct editing style to your taste. I mean, let me just pick that one. You know, from the start to the finish, got a much better color tone. And if I was to up the clarity of that, change a few bits, make it a little bit grungy, you know, start to see uh, uh, an image that's to your taste. One of the best things you can control with your smartphone is your shutter speed. If you go late of an evening into a city or somewhere like that, you can just add this to your phone, make sure it's stable and shoot at shutter speeds like 30th of a second or sometimes even longer, like 10 second exposures. And you can drag the shutter speed and you can tell stories using the motion of the street. You'll get like light trails from cars. It's a really cool way to, to have dynamic shots and make incredible images using a smartphone. Well, that concludes the day. I hope you've learned something about how to shoot amazing pictures on your smartphone. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all the good stuff and check back to amateurphotographer.com.